you can smell the sulfur in the air. Oh, destination, you know what? Submarine. Hey! Hey, if you like the love of the this definitely was worth the two and a half hour drive to get here. This is absolutely brilliant. Hello and welcome to another adventure. Today we're going to be taking the sea Dew west down Lake Erie, which means we've got to do a lot of traveling once again. It's a beautiful morning. It's the 1st of September, so it's a Labor Day weekend, 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, a chilly morning for the early September, really chilly. So anyway, this is where we're heading, uh, straight down Highway 3, heading west, so no major highways. It's going to take us through Port Coburn first, over the Welling Canal, and then once we get out of there, we're going to continue along Highway 3, all the way up to Waynefleet, and then we're going to take it all the way down into Dunville, and when we get to Dunville, you see this, you go over the Grand River, which of course, you take the Grand River, you'll end up in Kitchener and places like that. Uh, once we come out of Dunville, it's pretty much a straight road for a long, long time. As you can tell by the CD behind me, it's a long straight road all the way back. Uh, but the, the drive is really, really nice. So here we are, we're heading down this Highway 3 through these little towns. Or I should say villages, they're actually very, very small communities uh, dotted along Highway 3 all the way down. I must be getting close to uh, Nanticoke. Nanticoke, I think that's how you pronounce it. Down on Lake Erie. You can smell the sulfur in the air. Such a pungent smell. Really, really pungent. Quickly pulled over to the side of the road to get the drone up. Uh, just to let you know, there was actually two smelly things in the area. The other one is Imperial Oil Refinery, which I actually just passed, which is just to, uh, just behind me, basically. Uh, oh, the Nanticoke Refinery is uh, owned uh, by uh, Exxon Mobile, and it refuels primarily SO branded gas stations. And this, what you're looking at, is the steel factory at Nanticoke. Uh, the current operation has a focus on making steel for the automotive sector and as North America's newest Greenfield steel mill, it is one of the most efficient mills in North America. Now if I was to drive down a country road and I saw a field full of cows, I'd go cow. And most people go, oh yeah, look, look, cows, cows, nice. But what would people do if I was driving down a country road and I went, Submarine! No, seriously, submarine. I'll tell you what, what a really cute little place. Apparently this is the only proper store in town. Uh, super friendly service, you know. Anyway, I got the fuel, um, I got the sea depot filled up and we're all ready to go. I gotta go down to the marina and uh, we'll head on out. Still haven't told you where I am yet. All right, I made it to my destination. I'm in a place called uh, Port Burrell, or Port Burwell, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, what an amazing ramp and such a friendly bunch of people here. Uh, the gentleman in the shack here at the boat launch was probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met at the boat ramp, super nice. So anyway, I'm riding uh, today around Port Burwell, or Port Burrell, we'll find out how it's pronounced later, with uh, Mark, who's on the uh, Sea Dew Fish Pro. He's gonna show me around. He, uh, he has a cottage down here and uh, decided he wants to meet up with me, so it's, I really appreciate. And uh, we're gonna head out onto the water. I guess we're gonna go out onto the lake first. It's a beautiful day, started off really cold, uh, but it's warmed up now, it's about 20 degrees. It's meant to get up to like 24 later on, uh, but super light winds, so the lake should be nice and calm. So we'll mosey on out and uh, see what we can find on this adventure. First time riding with someone who's got a fish pro, love it. We're just saying, uh, we've had a lot of storms down here on Lake Erie recently. So there's a lot of water being rushed down from uh, higher up. And uh, it's all funneled into here. So engines like a sea is gonna suck it up, right? So your normal propeller engines are fine. So we'll give it a sh uh, clear out very shortly. It is a really, really nice place. I'm so pumped that I came down here. It was worth the drive. I've not even left the harbor yet, I'm enjoying it. So I'm glad I got a guide today. Mark's just telling me uh, you got to stay pretty much to the side as you come out and between the markers uh, because it is extremely shallow 
in certain areas and uh, numerous people have gone flying out of here and uh, yeah just stacked it on the mud banks you can see how it just comes out of the water like that and same just as you get to the end of the pier apparently as I said a moment ago, it's been quite stormy on Lake Erie. In fact, it's the first time I've been able to ride for nearly two weeks. So the weather forecast on Windy was showing east-northeasterly winds, seven kilometer an hour sustained and 12 gusts. So let's see. Now what we're gonna do first is head out to Long Point first. Uh, straight across, there's not much to see, he says, uh, on the shoreline from here. So here, here it goes. So when I saw the forecast for east northeasterly winds, I had a feeling that the uh, part of Lake Erie we're on should be sheltered by Long Point that sticks out as it juts out quite far into Lake Erie. So that should technically prote uh, protect us from those winds. But I could be wrong. All right, the weathermen got it wrong again. <laughs> they did say seven kilometer an hour, gusting 12. I think it's a little breezier than that. But thankfully there's no white caps, just a little ripply. So it is quite, it's comfortable to ride right now. Anyway, Long Point, quite a bit of a ride. I believe it's like 30 kilometers to get to Long Point. So we're gonna go straight to Long Point. I should quickly just add, this is Mark's first ride to Long Point on the Sea-Doo. He's been there many times before, but never on the Sea-Doo. So it's his first time riding out there. Take a look at these uh, cliffs on the way back. Uh, we'll ride a bit closer to the shoreline and uh, take a look at those. They're huge, big massive sand cliffs. I've never seen anything like this before. This is like amazing to see. I've heard about it, but never seen it. Wow. There's a property way up there, because you can see the uh, Muskoka chairs. It looks like they've tried to place some kind of uh, sea defense here uh, to stop the storms from eroding the uh, wall of sand here. I mean, look at the sand here. I'm going to show you this, how it just literally just slopes uh, into the lake. It's unbelievable to see. He's insane! Hey? Sand Hill The whole cliff is made of sand, basically. All the way there's at least 10 to 20 feet deep. Right. Water's up a bit high. Right now, you can see all the footprints of people trying to climb up a hill. <laughs> That's some fall down if you go up there. <laughs> See how close I get, seven feet. Uh, what you're seeing in the water right here, the change of color is clay. Uh, Mark was just saying, well, come do some pottery, just pull up and uh, yeah, mold yourself some clay. You might some, need some machinery to get the wheel going. Gem of a ride basically on Lake Erie. I never this, knew this existed. This is amazing to see. view they have but uh extremely exposed from the elements here uh we've got a bit of a sea defense up there trying to protect them they're working on it way down there as well but erosion is a big thing around here apparently very big uh mark was saying it's eroding like five ten feet a year at the moment with the storms that are coming in I do have some drone footage of some of the erosion uh, which we captured on the return bit of the trip which is coming up very shortly But it, it is quite choppy out here. But it, it's comfortable, it's not like back breaking.
gonna have to start considering uh, the fuel. Um, I don't want to go below 120 kilometers and uh, maybe another bar and that'll be it. Now I have to turn back. So hopefully we'll get to the uh, long point before that point of the journey. Rule of thumb really for safety is a third of a tank. Uh, that way you have another third to get back and then another third and a teeny little bit uh, of, of reserve just in case. And there it is. <laughs> Long Point Lighthouse. Well, here I am, folks, back at the lighthouse, which I visited two years ago uh, with Wayne. When I took the G6 Limited out for a, a, a rip, for a test drive. And now I'm here again. This time coming from the west side and not the east side. It's a beautiful day just like it was last time I was here. And the other difference is this video is in 4K. The last one was in HD. So if you, if you launch from Long Point, you come up from way down that way. And if you go in a straight line to so there is Port Dover. And in the distance, you can see uh, an anti-coke uh, Stelco Steel, which is what we drove by on the way in. But yeah, this is like Long Point's version of Peely Island, but with a lighthouse. The lighthouse is bonus points. This is probably the hardest light to access if you don't have your own boat. Reason being, it sits at the tip of Long Point Peninsula, which is 25 miles out into Lake Erie. This is the third tower to be uh, constructed here at Long Point. The first tower was constructed back in 1833 and stood a mere 50 feet tall. And then the second tower was constructed back in 1843 and stood a little bit taller at 70 feet. The present day tower, which is the one we see now, was built in 1916 and stands at 102 feet tall and its light is visible right across Lake Erie to Pennsylvania. That is our trip to the lighthouse over and done with. But what else can I find down here on the shores of Lake Erie as I make my way now back to Port uh, Burrell or Burwell, however you want to pronounce it. So I think we're going to stick a little bit closer to shore. I want to have another look at those cliffs a little bit closer. And there's something else I want to try and find while I'm down here. And I believe it's on the other side of Port Burwell. For a place to bathe. Whoa! Destination, you know what? <laughs> I know what. There he goes. Maybe the dad will fall over. No, he's going for it. He's done. I love it. I could have put an Aussie man voice over that. <laughs> Up there. So you can see what the storms, when it rains really heavy, all the water washes down, you can see the pattern it's made there, but at the same time when they get those really, really rough storms, it's actually eroding this whole cliffside uh, dramatically. Uh, it's more evident as we go further down, uh, but along here you got all the uh, wood that's all piled up over the years. Won't be long before these trees will start falling down. Um, I just noticed as we were riding down, so we just stopped. Do you see what we see? That's the erosion taking uh, back the land. 
and uh, part of a house has completely collapsed down the uh, side here. Unbelievable. I've actually got the name down here of the Grand Canyon of Lake Erie and you can see why it's like a miniature version but the, the shape of those uh, sand rocks is basically how you'll see um, in the Grand Canyon parts of it like that it's dotted all the way around and also on the inside This has been dubbed Port Burwell's Grand Canyon and 10 years ago it never existed but over the past 10 years Lake Erie has seen some amazing massive storms uh, which include Seiches which is a very high level of water surge along with very strong winds which have eroded the coastline at an alarming rate and it's resulted in this amazing creation the Port Burwell Grand Canyon Why kind of party, guys? <laughs> I'm glad I got that. Looks like a fishing vessel. Oh, it'll do. Summary.
so bizarre. So bizarre. I'm in a Canadian river by Lake Erie and there's this freaking submarine there from the Cold War. Weird. Apparently we can open it up any second now. Once we get past this light last building, uh, we can go. There it goes. This does? Yeah, and it parks up there. Got the camps out there. Oh nice! Nice little uh Perfect, that isn't it? All right, let's hit it. Okay, yep. ready? Be a kid again. Hey, All right. Hey, Mark. That was brilliant. I freaking love that. That's so cool. I've always wanted to do that in like a, a windy area in this, in this river. Yep. Oh, I loved it. It's the closest I'll get to that place in the states where they go through the rocks. So apparently we get to open it up again, hence why I put this on here, so you get a bird's eye view, because apparently you can go faster up here, but it's a bit tighter as well. So uh, we'll get this camera going very shortly. Another 50 meters and I think we can go.
ride of the season. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. <laughs> and away we go again. What's that, Mark? No, I got it in town. Oh, yeah, the Port Burwell, just just off Victoria, I think it was. Oh, okay. That, you probably passed this little gas station. No, I came in another road. Oh, okay. Yeah, I came in just south of Vienna. No, you know stuff. Look at that, how close we are. Yeah, sounds good to, oh yeah, fuck, look at that. <laughs> all right, uh, thankfully it's all mud around here. Yeah. That was absolutely brilliant. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, Mark was just saying, uh, if the water was higher, which it is sometimes, you can actually go further up the river. But we're down to a foot just there, so head back. And the good thing about this river, it is, it's all sand and mud. There's nothing else, there's no rock, it's sand and mud. If you hit a rock, it's because some yarbo probably threw it in there. But apart from that, you should be fine. Um, yeah, if you're coming here for the very first time and not riding with someone, if I was you, just take your time, ride through slow and maybe gun it on the way back. Uh, we just gunned it because Mark's done it so many times. Absolutely brilliant.
I just had a lovely, lovely day. I really have down here in Port Moral. Oh well. Um, Mark, thanks very much for taking me out today and coming for the ride. I know it's your first time at Long Point on the Sea Do, so uh, it's always safe to travel long distance with someone else just in case something goes wrong. So uh, he ticked that off his list. He's on the uh, Long Point on the Sea Do. He's been to there before, but not by Sea Do. So uh, yeah, and I've been down here in this river. Um, it's just brilliant. I loved it. This was the highlight for me, just riding on here. So nice. So this is the lovely town of Port Burwell on the uh, north shoreline of Lake Erie and it really was a spectacular day out I had. I really really enjoyed it and I look forward to coming back again. But there's one last thing I have to talk about and it's that submarine down there. How did a submarine end up here in Port Burwell? Well it's a real submarine. Uh, it is. Um, it's HMCS Ojibwe and it's an Oberon class submarine that served with the Royal Canadian Navy and then later the Canadian Maritime Command. Uh, it was originally intended for service with the British Royal Navy as HMS Onyx. Uh, the submarine was transferred to Canadian ownership before completion and then entered RCN service in 1965. It was decommissioned, I should say, in 1998, and in 2010, Ojibwe was laid up at uh, CFB Halifax awaiting disposal, with the Elgin Military Museum planning to preserve her as a museum vessel. The submarine was then towed to Port Burwell in 20 2012 and was open to the public in 2013. And that's exactly where she is still today, and you can come and visit her and have a tour around, and I'll put a link in the description uh, in this video. All right, I got what I wanted. Uh, day's over. It's been an absolute gem of a trip today. Really enjoyed it. A long drive, two and a half hours to get here. Uh, $20 to park at the marina. Uh, the young chap down there was super nice and friendly. Uh, recommend this place. I'll come back again. Really, really nice. Uh, thank you to Mark uh, for tagging along today and coming out for the ride. I really appreciate that. Hopefully I'll see you again soon, Mark. Appreciate that. And uh, Thanks for hospitality to your wife as well, Natalie. Really, really good. So anyway, I'm gonna head home now. I've got a two and a half, three hour drive back to uh, Crystal Beach Ford Erie Way and uh, clean the sea-do up and uh, think of my next adventure. Until then, stay safe. See you all soon.